efficiently track your activities in 2025 with this fitness tracker template created in Excel. Now this may be a fitness tracker, but it can work for any activity. This could be a tracker for your study plan or for your meal plan. Any activity will work. It consists of two main sheets. We have the month calendar, where we have an icon for the activity and details. We also have summary statistics above, both for this currently selected month and the year. And calculations are based off the dates in cell 01. Somebody can change the drop down list for the month and that will change the details being shown. There is also this full calendar view where we can see the entire year and some of the details have been removed. Instead, a color is used to track those activities with the summary stats above. You can download this fitness tracker from a link in the description of this video. It is fully open, so you can explore the formulas and the techniques used if you like, and it can be edited and updated as for your needs. I'll also put links in the description of the video so that you can learn about any technique used for this template that you may not understand already. Now let's have a quick look at how this works. First of all, we have this icons sheet where we simply have a table with the activity and an icon. We also have a sheet called fitness tracker, which has a table with all of the activities. We have the all important date, then the activity, the icon and the details. If I click on one of the cells in column C, we can see an X lookup function has been used to return the associated icon for that activity. We then have a calc sheet. And on here, we've got separate calendars for the different elements of the fitness tracker. First of all, we have the calendar itself. And if I click on cell B3, we will see a formula that's been used. The same formula that I showed in a previous video on how to create these calendars and the link for that is in the description of the video. We then have a separate range that uses a filter function, and this is returning the icons as per the date in question. So we can see the run icon for the 2nd of January there. Then we have a very similar filter formula in the third range here, but this one's put in through the details of the activity on that date. These different ranges are kept separate and then they are pulled through to the month calendar sheet into the respective cell. So how do we add an activity? Well, we simply go to the fitness tracker. We'll add in a new date down the bottom, such as the 12th of January, 2025. I'll put an activity in such as resistance. In comes the icon from the XLOOKUP function. And maybe I'll say this was workout A. And if I return to my month calendar, we will see that on Sunday, the 12th of January, workout A is there. And the calculations above that calendar would have updated. The next thing you might be wondering is how do we edit an activity? Now, if I start by coming to the icons sheet, you can change any of these icons and activities as much as you like. But for this demo, what I'll do is I'll just add a fifth activity. So I'm going to add an activity for yoga. And then I need to return the icon. And I'll do this by clicking insert, icons, and I'll search for the icon that I want, which is yoga. Lots of icons here if you want to create a study plan or a content creation plan or anything else that you may be wanting to track. But I'm going to choose this icon for now, the yoga icon. I'll insert it and then I'll look at changing its color. 
So maybe for this demonstration, what color haven't I used yet? Maybe I'll go for a much darker blue and then I'll click the icon beside it to place it in the cell. And that is done. So now on my fitness tracker sheet, if I put an activity for the 13th of January and say that it is yoga, across will come the yoga icon. I don't really know what details to put here. Maybe I'll just put light for a light workout. And on the month calendar sheet, we can see that yoga activity has been logged. Now what hasn't been logged yet though, is in the summary above. So because I've created a fifth activity, I will need to add in an extra row really here. So I'm going to insert a row in place of row six. This may not be necessary if you're just changing the existing four activities. And for each of these, I'll put in yoga and just drag down the formula above. I have an awesome sum function above here doing the deed. And if I drag that down, that will plot yoga. And then again over here, I'll drag it down with a count if spin used this time for that yoga activity. So for the month calendar sheet, that's all we need to do to either edit or add different activities that you want to track in your calendar. If you're using the full calendar sheet, then we will need to make some adjustments here as well. First of all, there's that same adjustment required for the summary stats. So let me just quickly go ahead and do that. Now I did put a simple column chart to the right of that summary area, so that will now need adjusting. I can click on the chart and simply resize the area used to include yoga. And then what I have been doing is changing the color of these columns to match the icon for that consistency. And that same color will be used in the conditional formatting as well, which is now making me regret the dark blue color as that's going to obscure the day of the month in the calendar view. But let's proceed. So to change the column, I would click on it once, then click on it again to isolate that data point. And I'll probably right mouse click here and I'll just choose that same dark blue fill, which I think was this one, and the chart is updated. Now for the conditional formatting. Now because the formula used for the conditional formatting utilizes table references, I've had to define a name for the formula and then use that in the conditional formatting rule. But that shouldn't be too big a problem for us as we can just copy one of the existing named formulas and make an edit. Let me show you how. I'm going to start by clicking on cell B10 right now. Unnecessary, but I like it as a habit for the origin cell because of relative references that have been used in these formulas. If you're not completely understanding what I'm talking about at the moment, please don't worry. I've got many videos at my channel about different reference techniques, but for now it's not going to constrain us in our activity. All we need to do is click cell B10, up to formulas, name manager, and we'll see there's a few names in here, but four in particular start with the letters FX and then the name of the activity. And we can see an X lookup function has been used. Now I'm going to take a copy of one of those. Might as well do the selected one of FX cycle. So if I select the formula in the bar for refers to, I'll take a copy and then I'm going to create a new rule. I will label this as FX yoga and I'll paste in the formula. But on the end of the formula, I'm going to change where it says cycle to yoga. Now this name manager can be a very awkward and fiddly place to write formulas. It's not ideal, but as we're making only a simple little change, I'm hoping that we have the confidence to work here. Any mistakes, just cancel 
and go back in to try again. Don't let it put you off. But if I click OK for now, that is the name created. Let me close down the name manager and then I'll go into my conditional formatting. If I click on Home, Conditional Formatting, Manage Rules. I can see the rules of the current selection. I'm going to change it to this worksheet. Not necessary right now, but maybe a nice habit in case you don't see any rules when you open this up. Just expanding the size of mine because you can see at the bottom, if I scroll down, that I have many, well, I don't have many, I have four conditional formatting rules, one for each activity. The other rules that you see here are different rules that have been used to hide the day of month numbers that don't relate to that calendar month. So for example, I can see the blank cells at the beginning of March because they are the final days of February. Now for this, I'm going to select one of these conditional formatting rules. I'm going to duplicate the rule, move this down to the bottom using the arrow provided. I'm doing this so they have low priority over the rule previous mentioned. And I'm going to edit the rule so that instead of FX run, it will be doing FX yoga and then the format button so that I can choose the appropriate color. So I'll go for that dark blue, which I think was this one. And I'm going to change the font to white here, otherwise I'm simply not going to see it. I'll click OK out of each of these. There's my rule, click OK. And that is it done. I can see that activity is tracked on the 13th of January. And that is how we can edit and add our own activities to the activity tracker. So start 2025 on the right foot, track your activities effectively so that we can be accountable for our fitness or our study sessions or whatever it is that we want to track. And this little spreadsheet gives us a nice, simple but effective way of doing so. If you like this video and the template I've provided, please hit that like button as it really does help and if you want to learn more about Excel, subscribe to this channel so that you will receive the latest videos as they are released. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.